Hi, welcome to DPN. My name doesn't matter. Let's dive in. So we've been talking about these church history figures, and up to this point, we've talked about pastors. We've talked about Justin Martyr and Polycarp and Irenaeus, who were all these very graceful pastors, very gracious to people around them. Intellectually strong, but um, extremely pastoral in their nature. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about three authors. You, that's right. Today is three for one. So these are authors whose primarily whose primary career was to write, and they wrote and taught in schools. So you have three of them. We're going to look at them today: Tertullian, Hippolytus, and Origen. Tertullian was about 160 to 225. AD. He was the son of a Roman centurion in North Africa, Carthage. He was a lawyer who was uh, very successful, had an aptitude for legal argument, airtight legal argument, and was very uh, strong as an individual. Um, and he became a Christian at around the age of 40. We don't really know about his conversion story. We just know that it happened. So he became a Christian around the age of 40 and immediately begins to write uh, in defense of the gospel and in refutation of heresies. Uh, so he is immediately, with his sharp wit and his sharp pen and his penchant for airtight argument, immediately launches into um, defying and de denying heresies. So some of the key themes about which he wrote were that uh, there was in the Christian, a need to be separate from the world. So he wrote a lot about holiness and the need for separating from the world. He also wrote a lot about the Trinity. He's the first Christian author we have outside of the Bible who uh, articulates the Trinity and explains it fully. He's the one who actually coined the name Trinity. Um, he's the one that actually came up with that name and that description for it. He's also accredited as saying the seed of the martyrs is the blood of I, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. So the church uh, was facing persecution and Tertullian's encouragement to everyone was go ahead and charge into gospel battle because the seed, uh, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. So he was, uh, some negatives were that he was very harsh. He tended to insist that everyone needed the same level of holiness that he committed himself to and that he required uh, that kind of holiness. So great was his pursuit of holiness that he joined a group called the Montanists, who were a ascetic group that lived on a hillside and anxiously lived as if tomorrow Jesus was coming back. They were the ones that sat on a hillside and watched the clouds to see if they would open and Jesus would ascend, descend um, to reclaim the earth. So that's Tertullian. Uh, he was a great writer, great author. Now we look at Hippolytus. Uh, Hippolytus is interesting because we didn't know anything about him. Uh, he never signed any of his works, but he wrote thousands. Um, so in about, but in the 1840s, they found a statue uh, to Hippolytus, a, a statue of, of him, and they found on that statue was inscribed a list of his works. And so that's how we know what he wrote because we had all these anonymous works that had been collected and, and saved over the centuries, uh, over, over the, yeah, over the centuries. And they, uh, when we found his statue, we saw the names of his work and went, oh, here's the author. So we don't know much about him, except that he refuted heresies. And the primary heresy that he uh, dealt with was Jesus's divinity and humanity. Uh, we believe that Jesus is 100% God, 100% man. And if you try to figure that out, so, uh, Hippolytus spent his time writing about that and explaining that to us. We're, we're grateful for his work. But again, not a pastoral, not a pastor, not a pastoral tone in his letters. He was a scholar and an author. Now, the final one we want to look at today is Origen. And Origen has 800 plus manuscripts of writing. This guy was crazy. He's called the Iron Man of the Bible because he was he was an incredible author. He wrote constantly, uh, seeming to not seeming inexhaustible supply of writing, and he uh, also did so under extreme persecution. So they um, his his dad dies when he's 17 years old. He became a Christian when he was young. He's in a Christian family. His dad dies at 17 years at, when he's 17 years old. And he all, all, all of a sudden becomes the head of the household. He quickly gets a job teaching. And at, at 17, he's teaching in a school. And at 18, they make him in charge of the whole school. 
So he suddenly is promoted in Alexandria to the principal of this large school and immediately begins to write, just writes like crazy. Uh, to give you some context, when he's 18 years old, he starts writing and in his lifetime, he writes 215 commentaries on various parts of the Bible. And to give you some context for that, I wrote one book on Ephesians. It took me two years to write. I'm writing uh, another one on Philippians right now. It has taken me two years to write. We're editing and hoping to get that out next year. So to give you some context, my books take me about a year to two years to finish one brief, they're not long and they're not intense, brief commentary uh, on a portion of the Bible. And this man writes 215. Now, he didn't live to be 215 years old. So that's a lot of writing. And it's crazy. He, he wrote like crazy. And the, the idea was Origen believed that truth would change everything. That people having the knowledge of Jesus in their hands and the knowledge of the scripture in their hands would, would save the soul. So he disciplined himself to where he wrote constantly. And he was writing all the time. Again, we have over 800 manuscripts of his writing that have been preserved. And that is after Emperor Justinian, later on, tried to burn half of his works. So, uh, he was he was a very prolific writer. Now, theologically, Origen had problems just like Tertullian and just like Hippolytus. They had He had some issues where he blended Platonic approaches or, or Plato's approach to learning with scripture. So he said that the Bible was to be examined on three levels. First was uh, what it literally says on the surface of it. Second is what it means to the soul or morally for us. And third is what it means allegorically. And he called that the hidden meaning of text. Now, because Origen talks a lot about interpreting scripture allegorically, people tend to think that that's his primary mode of interpreting scripture. However, Origen took the scripture extremely literally, always extremely literally, so much so that he read the passage where it says it's better for a man to be, uh, for a man to cut out his, take out his eye than to be led into sin. And he felt so compelled by that and he was dealing with lust at the time, so he castrated himself. That's a dude that takes the Bible literally, not a guy that's taking it allegorically. So he very, very much a literal interpretation. If you read his works, very seldom is there any allegory or allegorical interpretation. He worked very hard to do a literal interpretation. Origen, again, faces extreme persecution. And in 250, he's arrested uh, and he is uh, held in prison and tortured constantly while, uh, while still writing and professing Jesus Christ as Lord and standing for the gospel. And he uh, dies after having been let go. He dies uh, a year, I think a year later. Um, and we learn uh, from Origen this iron will uh, and two things that we can take from, from these writers, right? One is that there's this iron will in the gospel where we uh, focus on scripture and the teaching of scripture. And as that pervades society, we are going to sound harsh. We are going to be corrective and we're going to be, we're going to need passion. Um, we're going to need that fire of, of uh, study and uh, theology. And these three authors exemplify that. Uh, but we also learn that we need to temper that with the grace of the men that we've already studied. These men like Polycarp and Irenaeus and, uh, and Justin Martyr, who were incredibly gracious in their approaches to, to people. So we want to be like Origen and Tertullian and Hippolytus and that we want the discipline and we want to stand for the gospel and we want to boldly, uh, boldly proclaim the gospel to our, uh, those opposed to it. We also want to temper that with the grace that they fail to show at times and uh, the slow, long-term ministry that they fail to show at times. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this church history moment. Uh, now go get back to work, take time to breathe today, and enjoy yourself. Bye.